By June of 1863, the Confederates had won most of the major battles of the Civil War. But in early July, the Union Army had won two very important victories, one at Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, and the other at Vicksburg, Mississippi. Southerners needed another major win somewhere to keep their hopes alive if they were to realize their dream of an independent southern nation. The main Union and Confederate armies in the East were not actively campaigning and were still licking their wounds after the Battle of Gettysburg. General Braxton Bragg commanded the main Confederate army in the western theater of the war. General Bragg was not well liked by his men. He was tough, inflexible, and had a ferocious temper. Bragg's opponent was Union General William S. Rosecrans. On the other hand, General Rosecrans was popular with his men. They nicknamed him Old Rosie. Rosecrans outmaneuvered Bragg's army, forcing the Confederates to retreat south from Tennessee into northern Georgia. Rosecrans accomplished this without having to fight a major battle. Because Rosecrans believed that he had the Confederate army on the run, his 58,000-man army was scattered out to chase them down. Rosecrans' army was divided into three corps, and he was attempting to encircle Bragg's 60,000-man army. Bragg sent out orders for his army to concentrate at Lafayette, Georgia, in an attempt to destroy Rosecrans' forces, one corps at a time, while they were still scattered. Bragg's subordinates did not have much confidence in Bragg's ability to lead, and when General Bragg issued orders to attack, his officers created excuses as to why they could not follow his orders. Meanwhile, Rosecrans was getting reports that large numbers of Confederate troops were concentrating in Lafayette, Georgia, and Rosecrans woke up to the fact that General Bragg was no longer retreating. Rosecrans issued orders for his army to reunite in the vicinity of Chickamauga Creek, a few miles southeast of Chattanooga, Tennessee. At dawn, September 19th, 1863, both armies were solidly facing each other along a line stretching six miles. The woods were so thick that neither commander could be sure where the other enemy units were, or even where their own units were. The battle began by accident.
One of the Union Corps commanders, General George Thomas, sent out some scouts to investigate the thick woods. The Yankee scouts discovered some rebel cavalrymen and drove them back to their own infantry lines. Then the Confederate infantry advanced, pushing back the Union scouts. Heavy firing broke out on both sides, and neither side gaining any advantage. All day long, Bragg attacked the Union left flank, hoping to push the Yankees into a dead-end valley. Rosecrans responded by sending reinforcements to his left flank. Rosecrans was fortunate that his left was commanded by one of the toughest generals in the Union Army, General George Thomas. Thomas had direct telegraph wire to Rosecrans. Telegraph was considered to be the ultra-modern technology in 1863, and Chickamauga was one of the few Civil War battles where this high-tech device was used to good effect. Thomas held off the brunt of the Confederate attacks throughout the day. Early in the morning of September 20th, Bragg got reinforcements. Confederate President Jefferson Davis ordered General James Longstreet, along with 12,000 tough veterans from Robert E. Lee's army, to board trains to join Bragg at Chickamauga. Because Union forces held the railroads at Knoxville, Tennessee, Longstreet's Corps was forced to take the long way around. The long detour took Longstreet's force through both Carolinas and Georgia, which meant that only 6,000 of Longstreet's 12,000-man corps arrived in time for the battle. With Longstreet's arrival, Bragg would now have 66,000 men with which to oppose Rosecrans' 58,000. Bragg gave command of his right flank to General Leonidas Polk. Bragg issued orders for Polk to begin the attack, which was to be followed up with an attack by Longstreet on the Confederate left. Bragg waited several hours, listening for the sound of Polk's attack. 
General Bragg wants to know why he doesn't hear any battles coming from your division. Do tell General Bragg that my heart is overflowing with anxiety. Overflowing? When this response was reported to General Bragg, it was said that he swore in such a manner that would have powerfully assisted a mule team up a mountain. Bragg ordered Polk to attack immediately. Polk's attack made no headway. So Bragg told Longstreet to go ahead with everything he had. Longstreet then had a great piece of luck. Over on the Union side, an officer had failed to see a blue division that was hidden in the woods. This officer reported to Rosecrans that there was a dangerous quarter mile gap in the Union battle line. Upon hearing this, Rosecrans ordered another division to move over to close this supposed gap. The result was, while trying to close a gap that did not exist, Rosecrans created a real one. Into this gap charged Longstreet's veterans, shooting, hollering, and taking prisoners. The rebels drove back all the Yankees in the area. About one-third of the Union Army, including Rosecrans himself, and two corps commanders were sent scurrying back to Chattanooga. Longstreet could not believe his luck. He sent messages to Bragg asking for reinforcements to follow up where the Confederate Army was breaking through. But Bragg responded that he could not spare any troops from his exhausted right and that Longstreet would have to make do with what he had. Unfortunately for General Bragg, most of the Union Army did not run away. Those that remained rallied around General Thomas in a defensive, semicircle hilltop position. From there, Thomas held off repeated attacks by Bragg's entire army. Last ditch stand made Thomas famous. He was nicknamed the Rock of Chickamauga.
Rosecrans had placed the division in reserve under General Gordon Granger. Granger's men had been ordered to guard the road to Chattanooga. Granger, hearing the sound of a large-scale, far-off battle, went against his orders and said, I'm going to Thomas. By four o'clock, Thomas was still holding firmly, even though his men were nearly out of ammunition. Some even began throwing rocks. Looking behind them, the Union soldiers could see a large force coming toward them and moving fast. If these turned out to be rebels, the whole Union army would be wiped out, and everybody knew it. When Granger's men arrived, bringing extra ammunition, Thomas was overjoyed. Granger's division arrived in time to repel several heavy attacks by Longstreet.
Finally, at sunset, Thomas ordered his exhausted troops to retreat to Chattanooga. The next morning, Bragg's generals urged him to pursue the Yankees before they could reorganize behind defensive positions in Chattanooga. But Bragg did not realize he had won the battle. He was shocked about the overwhelming number of casualties in his own army. True, his men had captured 51 cannons, 31,000 muskets, thousands of prisoners, and tons of supplies. But they also had lost 18,000 men, killed, captured, wounded, and missing, including 10 generals. Rosecrans had lost about 16,000 men. Chickamauga was an old Indian word meaning river of death. It appeared that the river already had the right name. When Bragg waited a day to begin his pursuit, his generals were furious. General Nathan Bedford Forrest called him a coward, a scoundrel, and demanded a transfer. The one-day delay gave the Yankees time to prepare for the expected rebel assault. Bragg then ordered his army to surround the Union Army, which was reorganizing in Chattanooga. He was determined to starve them into surrendering. The Bluecoats, those who had run and those who had stood, were reunited in defense of a besieged city. For months, these soldiers were trapped without any way to get out and without any way to get supplies in. The Battle of Chickamauga was the biggest battle in the Western theater of the Civil War. The great victory gave new hope to the Southern people that they might yet win their war for Southern independence. <laughs>